Hello Instagram. I should now be live on the Royal Marines Band Service Instagram page. Hello. Hi, welcome to this um, episode six of series two of the Royal Marines Band Service Masterclass series. Uh, this, I believe, is the last one in this series, but I think there are more coming, so keep an eye out for those. So I'm seeing loads of people join now, which is great. Please say hi, give us a wave. Uh, great, so very quickly, I'll introduce this. Um, this masterclass, I'm gonna try and cover um, as much as I can about memorizing music, why we do it, um, how we go about doing it, especially in the core of drums, as our life is memorizing music and memorizing different routines, etc. And throughout, I'll also be covering um, what life is like as a Royal Marines bugler. And I'd like that as much as you can uh, to be a question and answer based um, subject. So please ask as many questions as you can, and I'll do my best to answer most of them. Um, so as more people are joining, um, it's probably best if I introduce myself. My name is Corporal Bugler Ben Streeter. Uh, just a bit of background about me. I joined the Royal Marines Band Service in 2011, but before that, um, I was raised in West Sussex, not too far from West Chiltington. Um, I played drum kit from around six or seven, um, learning in a little local town band in Petworth um, for a while. And then I saw the Royal Marines Band Service in, well, I think I was about 11, 11 or 12 for the first time. And that's when I fell in love with it. And I decided that that's the job I wanted to do um, as a career. So as I said, I auditioned in June 2011, joined in September and did my two and a half years training, passing out in December 2013, joining Royal Marines Band Collingwood in 2014. Um, since then, I served in Collingwood for a couple of years, joined Limpston Band um, in September 2016. Uh, from there, I got promoted. I did my promotional course this year in January. Um, and got promoted to corporal and joined Portsmouth Band just soon after. Um, I did MFM and then of course we're in lockdown. Um, <clears throat> but over my career, um, nine years, I've had some amazing experiences. Um, I've been really, really lucky. Um, I played some of my highlights. I played for the Rugby World Cup opening ceremony a few years ago at Twickenham. Um, I played alongside Top Secret um, on MFM 2017. Uh, that was a particular highlight. Um, and you can see that on YouTube now. And I also played uh, the solo last post in the Never Forgotten finale on MFM 2018, another very memorable um, point in my career. And I also had amazing um, chances to travel, travel the world. Um, when I was in training, I went to the Falklands twice. Um, out in Collingwood Band, I, I managed to go to South Africa, traveled a lot of Europe, Switzerland, uh, Norway, it was six years ago yesterday. Um, and then when I joined Limpston Band, I went to Mexico, uh, the States to name but a few. So I've been very, very lucky. Um, and they as well, uh, you know, all opportunities where you can go either on your own as a bugler to do a solo sunset ceremony or a last post or as a core of drums with a small ensemble or, of course, with the whole band itself. So that's great. Right. I'm just going to have a see and look who's there. Kim Hare. Hello. Uh, Scott Photography. Josh W. Taylor, 2001, hello. So I'm just scrolling through and seeing who we've got. Sticks, Dave, 77, Dave Navat, hello. Uh, Tom, cool. Great, 88 people, wow. Cool, okay, so I think we best start. So what I'm gonna cover in this masterclass is just a little brief introduction on why we memorize music. Why as a musician you might memorize music and why as um, a bugler in the core of drums, we memorise music. What type of learner you are, um, try and decipher um, how you can find that out for yourself um, and then how you can use that in practising uh, memorising music. Uh, and then, as I said throughout, I'm going to keep an eye on the questions, have little breaks in between and answer any questions you may have, either on memorising music or what life is like as a Royal Marines bugler. So, let's move on. Right, why we memorise music? Um, in the core of drums, as a bugler, we have to memorise everything we do. Everything we do um, engagement wise, whether it be a last post, uh, a mess beatings, a parade band, it's not only music we're memorising, it's also movement. So you've got to tie the two together. And the music can also be completely different. So as a bugler, 
as I said, you do drum solos. So that's a strip of four eight bar phrases, or you could do a drum static, and that differs if you're the static player where you're playing the solo line, or if you're um, a seconds player where you're waving your arms about, completely different ways of memorizing things again. Um, and parade bands, you're memorizing marches. And sometimes if you're on a beat retreat ceremony or if you're um, on horse guards, for example, you have to memorize all the movements as well because we're the ones that lastly lead the bands behind the drum majors. Um, as a musician, you'd memorize music for solos or recitals, but really a lot of the different techniques, you're gonna to have to tweak for certain things. So if you, as I said, if you're memorizing a drum static, for example, it's gonna be slightly different to memorizing a musical solo, but the way that you learn and the techniques should still line up. Let's just have a quick look through here. Hayden Miller, 17, love playing the military side drum with my cadet unit, but I've never played a bugle. What bugle should I start out on? Um, we use McQueen's bugles. Uh, they seem to work best for us. Um, I'm not sure how many different types of bugles there are out there, um, but do, do have a look around. Um, by all means, contact us um, afterwards, and I'm sure we could put you in contact. Hopefully, some cadet units do have bugles, so hopefully you might be able to... Uh, might be able to get a bugle from there. Cool. Right. Hello. 98 people. Wow. Loads of people. Cool. Right. So section one, if you like, what type of learner are you? Uh, this is massively trial and error. You've got to, um, you've got to have a play about and see which works best for you. But there are three types of learner. There's a visual learner, uh, people that see how they learn things, especially, um, if you're reading something, people learn very well if they can picture that in their head. There's an auditory learner uh, or audio. So if you learn by hearing things um, and there's a kinesthetic learner, which is someone that learns by actually doing something often called motor memory. Um, and I strongly believe that not one person is one of those, only one of those. I think me personally, I think I'm around, I'd say I'm about 80% audio and about 10% of the other two. Uh, but I learn mainly by listening to things. Uh, but everyone is massively different. So over, um, you know, in your practice sessions or whatever, just try working, you know, seeing how you retain information. You might already know that um, through memorising music or even exams. It, you know, if people are in your GCSEs or A-levels, um, seeing what way works best for you. Um, right, let's have another quick look through questions. Is Life on the Ocean Wave your favourite tune? It's up there. Uh, let's have a look. Right, okay. How did you go about getting promoted as a bugler? Good question. The promotion system within the band service um, is a merit-based promotion scheme. So you have to, um, basically over a year's uh, reporting period, you have to basically prove that you can do the job of a corporal. So you have to go out and show uh, that you can lead, so that you can organise and things like that to build up your report. And then that report goes forward um, to a board and they choose who they would like to promote out of those people. Um, and then after that, you then go and do your junior command course. The whole courses are changing now. So I did a six week course at the beginning of this year, but I know as of now the system is changing. So I couldn't tell you exactly uh, what the military side of the course is. But the musical side, uh, you do your B2 training uh, not long after you've passed out of training, after your B3s or whenever you want to. Um, and that basically qualifies you to be eligible for promotion. Um, now we've brought in as a band service, the Lance Corporal uh, rank. It's used a lot more now. So once you've passed your B2s or M2s for a musician, um, with a positive recommendation for promotion, uh, you can become Lance Corporal um, and that starts your promotion journey. Right, ways to practice memory. Um, first of all, you've got to be able to play the piece that you want to memorise from top to bottom uh, without any problems really, because there's no point in trying to memorise something that you can't play. Um, when you're playing through something, uh, really pay attention to phrases, uh, dynamics, notations, things like that. Um, with As a bugler, if you're looking through a set of drum solos, so you've got four 
eight bar phrases. Um, you've also got to look for parts that might repeat and might just give you little triggers um, throughout whilst you're trying to memorize. So for example, in a lot of drum solos, the last two bars of each solo, each eight bar phrase is very similar, um, if not the same. So that's one thing, if you're looking at memorizing a solo, those two bars, once you've memorized that, you've memorized you know, a good proportion of the whole set of solos already. And then try and memorize the beginnings of each solo. Um, so if you're looking at memorizing a long um, piece of music as a musician, for example, try and um, try to find different sections, so different phrases, different movements, if you like, as well, um, that you can try and trigger and try and just trip you over to the next part so that you're not trying to think of it as one huge piece of music, you're thinking of it as different sections. Um, one huge one is start small. Don't go and try and want to learn the longest piece possible as your first ever piece of music um, that you're going to memorise because all you're going to do is probably stress yourself out. So what you want to do is try and just memorise a short passage first. And this goes as well for when you're trying to learn, uh, let's say, a drum static. Learn the first phrase first. And if that's all you learn in one practice session, that's ace. That's great. You don't want to go in one practice session and have to think, right, I need to learn the whole thing from top to bottom. You've got to, you've got to try and break things down and, and allow yourself that time to commit things to memory because it's better going away and having absolutely nailed down eight bars, for example, rather than got stressed over a whole, a whole static and, and couldn't really remember the whole thing or a whole march, for example. Um, another good tip is to force yourself to get away from the part as soon as possible. Um, this is quite uh, a difficult one uh, sometimes because music is quite comforting uh, when, when you're looking at it, especially if you're performing something because you can hide behind it. Um, but if you're trying to memorise it, again, you can hide behind music and, and get too bogged down in thinking, you know, I know where that sits. So. You've got to force yourself sometimes just to think, right, I want to memorise that first stave. Look at that, try and memorise it the best you can. Turn the page over and see if you can play over it a few times. Right, let's have another few questions just whilst I'm there. Hi Ben, as someone who would go into the RM band on Cornet, is it possible to be able to, to, be able to do both at some point during my RM career? Uh, that's from Corey Kohut. Um, do both. I'm assuming you mean do both as in bugle as well as cornet. Um, possibly, although as a branch, we buglers do all the last posts um, and memorial events. It would be very rare that a cornet player um, would cover those because, you know, that's our job and cornet players um, are the other side. So that's a uh, interesting question. Uh, right. Is cornet a good gateway to a bugle? Absolutely, yes, definitely. Um, if you can start getting your lips moving and start thinking about um, how to produce sounds out of a cornet or a bugle, etc., it's it's a great start, really, really great start. Especially if you can't get hold of a bugle, um, because the you know sometimes cornets may be easier available than bugles. Um, Cameron Ogden, 2006. I'm learning the Cornet and the Sea Cadet Band. Great, brilliant. Uh, Paul Thomas, 81. I'm a strong drummer, grade two pipe band, but can't blow a bugle. Could I apply? Yes, you could. Um, I think if you if you have a chat to uh, Bangkok Will Amy Phillips after this um, about uh, proper recruitment uh, questions and stuff like that, that'd be great. But I'm pretty sure... Um, if you join or if you apply for the band service um, as a drummer and bugler, if you can play one, we'll be able to train you the other. Um, so I think, yeah, the roundabout answer to that is yes. Um, but definitely give it a go. Uh, do you do bugle marches from Howden Ethan? Yes, we do. We do them quite a lot. Uh, some old, some new. Um, yeah, we do them loads on concerts and boot retreats, etc. Great. Would you recommend joining a brass band like Hatherley to improve your skills? That's from Ginge Gore. Um, absolutely. 
definitely. If you can join a local band, um, if musicians and and buglers and and you know hopeful members of the core of drums join local bands join local cadet units just to get experience and um no doubt in local um local organizations there's going to be loads of people around you that could help you answer questions um etc so definitely um anyone like hadley silver band or or cadet units etc that's that's great um Otto, Rachel. My son's applying at present. He's more a side drummer, but he's played bugle at National Trafalgar Parade last year. Learn what he needed to do to learn within 12 hours on bugle. Great. Ace. Well done. All the best to him. Uh, okay, what else have we got? Which is the most memorable event in your career to date from Deb Hall 55? Uh, that would be quite a difficult one to answer, but probably... Um, as I said earlier, the top playing alongside Top Secret on MFM 2017, um, I've never felt an audience reaction quite like we did after that. That was unbelievable. Um, and you know, now as a, if if you haven't seen it already, go on YouTube, search um, Top Secret Royal Marines Corps of Drums. That I'm sure it'll pop up. I mean, it's had thousands and thousands of views. Um, but yeah, that's got to be up there as one of my most memorable. Um, points in my career amazing um, have I played swing march from Howden Ethan no I haven't I'm afraid um, and Josh W Taylor 2001 you saw that live it was brilliant thank you that was good it was really really good um, amazing experience and all the guys in Top Secret are great as well um, and we've got a great um, affiliation with Top Secret and a lot of other drum corps um, across the world um, that you know we work together closely with. There's lots of uh, masterclasses going on actually at the minute um, with the Royal Marine School of Music. They're getting in different people from all over the country, all over the world um, to give hints and tips, um, which is great. Um, right. Cameron Ogden, 2006. Should I join the Royal Marines band? Yes. If you play an instrument, if, if, you, want to, if you want to pursue a military music career, um, I would definitely recommend the Royal Marines Band. Great. Cool. Right, ideal. Right, let's go back to some more points on memorising music. Um, right, so going back to the type of learner that you are, always try and remember what type of learner you are and how you can play on that. So if you're a visual learner, try and think about picturing the music. Um, there's some people that I know that can almost take a photograph of a sheet of music in their head um, and read it you know, for all intents and purposes, it's amazing. And I can't do that. Um, but try and do that. If you're an auditory learner, listen to it. Um, and this is a good one anyway, no matter what type of learner you are, but listen listen to the piece of music. So if it's a set of drum solos, just play it over, uh, you know, on your iPod, whatever, just to get to know how it how it goes, if you like, how it feels. And if you're an auditory learner like me, it's even more helpful because I'm really learning quite you know quite well how it goes with that though be very careful that you make sure especially as a bugler um when you're learning things by ear try and read it as well and make sure you're playing the correct rhythms and the correct sticking um, because that's quite important in our job um, as well uh, and if you're a kinesthetic learner if you're a motor learner um do keep practicing you know repeat re repetition uh, actually get used to doing um playing over and over again um, and then hopefully that should commit things to um, to muscle memory um, right cool uh, practice things at different tempos that's a really good one don't ever set out to memorize a piece of music at top tempo because um, again what you could probably do is end up making yourself really frustrated uh, so Take things down, so as I said earlier, start small. So cut it down to a, a small sort of phrase and slow it down. So make sure that you're really taking in every bit of that um, passage uh, to commit it to memory. Right. Always consider what is going on around you. That's a really important one, especially in the core of drums. When you're trying to memorise a drum static, for example, you've got to... Uh, really remember what is going on to the right and left of you so you, you can think about the whole picture, uh, the bigger picture. 
really, really important. Um, so if you think about tears in a static, if things are going right to left, that's going to help you memorise it, especially if you know the tune of the static, if you like. Um, that's really going to help you memorise that phrase. If you, if you know a ripple is coming right to left or left to right, it's always going to help you um, so that you're not blinkered on your own. You're almost you know, looking for triggers around you to help you out. Again, when you're learning marches um, or um, if you're a musician uh, and you're doing a, a, a solo with the band or a recital, look for parts within the music um, that, again, could just help you trigger your memory. So um, I, in marches, listen to, uh, because I'm an auditory learner, I listen to a march and I pick out different parts of the march that could just help me re remember uh, how a certain bit goes. Um, I often listen to the clarinet line, weirdly, but it works for me. So again, it's working out what works best for you um, and you know how you can almost tailor your, your memorising, uh, your memory technique. Right. Do you, believe in, do you believe in starting at the end of the phrase and adding bars backwards to it to your practice, uh, that you practice the end as much as the beginning, or is that overcomplicating? was always told to do that. this. That's from Bronnie Winnie. Uh, to be honest, if it works for you, that's great. There are people that do work backwards. Um, I personally don't. Uh, but if you if you do start on the last couple of bars and then, you know, bar by bar go backwards and it works, that's great. As I said, everyone's different. Um, so, yeah, but it's another interesting technique, actually, to work backwards. Something that um, maybe some people here would like to try at some point. Again, it's all down to trial and error. If you don't know how you learn and if you don't know the best way and it takes years um, to sort of fathom how, how you actually learn something... Um, it's worth trying everything that you possibly can because something might just click. Um, hello, Dan Johnston, 1989. Hi. Um, right. Cameron Ogden, 2006. What's, the fa what's your favourite piece of music you have played? Mine is I Vow to Thee, My Country. Oh, I don't know. That's difficult. I, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't know really what my favourite piece of music I've played is. Uh, Haley one three seven five. Repetition is key. I know that's what my sons do. Record what they do and go over and over. That's a great tip. So if you're an auditory learner, recording what you do is a mega mega great tip because what you're going to do is then you're going to play it in your you know you can play it in your headphones, play it in the car when you're driving, um, and that will help you um, remember the way you learn best. Um, and repetition definitely is key um, because no one learns by playing something through once and that's it. If they do, that's amazing. I wish I could do that. I can't. Um, but yeah, definitely repetition is key. Um, again, the more times you repeat something as well, um, you're going to, you are going to commit things to muscle memory. And what happens after a while is that you can almost go into autopilot. I know almost you know pretty much every bugler definitely has gone out on a gig and you don't know how it's happened but you've got it absolutely correct and you've not really thought about it it's very strange <laughs> but that just shows that you've gone that far and you've really practiced it that much um that it that it doesn't go wrong um we like to you know practice things so that they 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 can't go wrong um yeah that's yeah definitely keep repeating things um if I am to play bugle, side drum and B-flat bugle, will I have a good chance of selection? That's from Hodgson Asa. Uh, yes, definitely. Um, yeah, if you play uh, bugle and side drum, that's, that's, that's great. Um, come along and audition. Um, see, see how you get on. Um, yeah, B-flat flute. You probably won't play as a bugler. Uh, unless you played it in your spare time. Um, but yeah, that's great. That would be a great start though. If if you can learn both, that's that's great. Um, right. Let's have a look. Sorry. Uh, right. Uh, Jasmine W17, how do you generally start to learn pieces if it's difficult 
um, say, do you learn maybe four bars and be able to play? Then we'll do the next four, then put them together. Yeah, really, really good. Um, that's another great technique. Um, so again, starting small, learn a few bars and then do the next few bars and then glue them together. Um, again, don't think about learning the whole piece top to bottom all the time because that can be sometimes it's again sometimes it might work for some people but personally for me and I know a lot of other a lot of other people if you try and just go top to bottom top to bottom all the time what you tend to do is waste a bit of time um so you're much better off piecing it together and building building up your memory um so yeah definitely take small sections and build up uh great what brand bugle and mouthpiece do you use? Uh, the bugles that we use at the minute are McQueen's bugles. Um, and the mouthpieces, I can't remember who makes those actually off the, off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, I think uh, lots of people use different mouthpieces. Um, at the minute, we're looking at uh, different mouthpieces, mouthpieces that we can use as well. So um, yeah, but McQueen's bugle. Uh, same question again. Right. Um, from Mary H. I play the drum kit and I'm learning percussion. If I joined, would the Warmings band teach me the skills and stuff I need? Yes. Yes, they would. Yeah, obviously get to the best standard that you can do before you audition. Um, and I'm assuming you want to be a percussionist um, by what you've just said there. Um, but yeah, the band service will teach you all that. Um, and obviously when you first join up, you go through your uh, military training phase, your 15 weeks at Limston, uh, where you don't touch music at all. Uh, but as a musician, you'll go through three years training um, at the School of Music as a bugler, slightly shorter, a um, couple of terms shorter than that. Um, but yeah, we will teach you everything we can and everything you need to know for your career once you pass out. Um, from Will Bishop, I'm currently an orchestral percussionist in an orchestra, but I would like to move into marching band stuff. How do I go about that? Um, the first stage to that would be try and find a local marching band to you. Uh, there'd be cadet units probably around near you. If not, the, there may well be um, marching bands. Um, have a little Google search and see what's around near you. Um, Aside from that, there's lots of material online. So have a look at videos, uh, videos of the Royal Marines Band uh, marching, and there's there's other you know marches and and music for that online. So um, do do have a look on there. Right. Have I ever played St George from Nicola King sixteen? Yes, yes I have. Yep, that's um, that was uh, quite a staple drum static that one. Um, can you use your own bugle in the Royal Marines? Um, interesting question. Possibly, depending on um, if it was the right, um, if it fitted in uh, with what we do. So obviously with the way it looks and, and the way it sounds as well, it would just have to be the right key. Uh, some of them are slightly, uh, slightly out compared to our ones. I'm not sure why. Um, but yeah, p potentially. Um, how do buglers and musicians differ in career careers? Um, interesting question. Um, promotion for uh, buglers is very similar to the band um, until you get to sort of colour sergeant level, uh, where <clears throat> beyond that, um, we have a couple of WO2 positions and one WO1 position. Uh, at, Currently, we can't commission within the buglers branch, um, but the buglers are, um, we are the people that uh, supply bugle majors and drum majors. Um, so at corporal, you can do your drum majors course. Um, and then at sergeant and above, you can be appointed um, and given a band as a drum major. Um, again, for sergeant and above, um, if you choose uh, to do so, and if you're promoted uh, and appointed, you can be appointed bugle major. Um, and then once you're appointed either drum major or bugle major, you can get promoted to WO2 and then later WO1 um, as the spec advisor for the buglers branch. Um, obviously, the band side to that, once they get to sergeant, um, 
they can then choose to do their bandmaster's course and then promote up through to uh, warrant officer as a bandmaster or they can choose to commission as a director of music. Um, Will Louch, is playing the bugle like playing the euphonium? Um, yes, similar. Uh, a lot smaller mouthpiece. Um, th- there are similarities and there are a lot of differences. Um, I don't play the euphonium personally, so um, I couldn't tell you the, <laughs> the exact difference. But yeah, there are some similarities there, definitely. Um, right, let's have a look, see if there's any others. If we play matched grip and want to be a bugler, should we learn traditional grip? Yes, definitely. Um, that's quite important. Um, all of our um, all of our work that we do um, is all traditional grip um, because playing on a on a military side drum um, is very difficult. Playing matched grip, <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely learn uh, learn matched grip and try and get as much information as you can on on uh, correct uh, grip with traditional grip um, as well. Right, uh, let's have a look. Right, okay, cool. Right, let's go on to a couple more points. Um, so yeah, always consider what's going on around you. Um, and I covered that. Um, repetition, that will mean muscle memory, hopefully. Um, and again, one I can't stress too much is start small. Don't set your goals too big. So don't, don't set... Um, this huge, you know, you don't want to sit there and think, right, I want to memorise the whole of this concerto um, in one, or I want to memorise the whole of this drum static in one. You've got to take it phrase by phrase. And again, if in your hours practice session you memorise one phrase of that, or even, even, you know, one stave of that, that's better than um, just saying that you've just gone over and over it and potentially not learnt that much. Right. Um, Okay. Um... Right, let's just have another look through some questions. If anyone's got any other questions on memorising music, please do fire them this way. Um, and any questions on what life is like as a Warmery's bugler? Um, sorry, let's have a quick look. Okay. I saw Top Secret in the Edinburgh 2 and they were incredible. They are unforgettable, definitely. Um, great. Okay. Ideal. Right. But yeah, definitely. When you're going through um when you're going through things, trying to memorize things, um, it's really important to to, you know, first of all learn find out what type of learner you are um, by trial and error. Um, start small um, and then take take things bits at a time. Um, how long have I played the bugle? Um, I started learning the bugle when I was 15 um, and then I joined the band service in 2011. Uh, so then after that, I did my two and a half years training. Uh, what is involved in the audition um, from Ori Upperstell? Um, that is quite a good question uh the the audition process um can be covered a lot more um in the next bit after this uh with Bangkok with amy phillips um but it's largely looking at your potential um as a musician or bugler you'll be uh, tested on your instruments and potentially other ones as well uh, to see how well you pick things up uh, and to see uh, your, what works best for you you'll also be tested physically as well there's some phys tests and things like that um but yeah, and there's an interview as well. But there's to get a full rundown of the exact um, audition process, do chat with um, Amy after this. I'm supposed to be able to answer. Oh, sorry, pause then. Don't know why. Uh, from Joe Bars, 1984. Hi, Ben. How closely do you work with other buglers in other bands? Are you separate from the band? Great question. Um, we work... Uh... Sorry, for some reason it lost connection there. Great. OK. Um, so, yeah, we work very closely with other buglers from other bands, um, obviously on huge mass bands, gigs, MFM, horse guards, um, sometimes foreign tattoos as well, or the Edinburgh tattoo. Um, but we are slightly separate to the band um, in that we do quite a lot of our own 
uh, engagements on the side as well. Just as the band go out and do small ensemble work, uh, we go out and perform mess beatings, displays, last posts, funerals, um, etc., memorials, um, all over the country, all over the world. Uh, but we do also join up with the band quite a lot for concerts and beat retreats and things like that. Uh, but we do work a lot with um, other buglers as well from other bands. Um, so yeah, is there much travel? Uh, yes, there is lots of travel. Um, I did loads. I was really lucky in my first year out of training in Collingwood. I went to Switzerland twice, Norway twice. Um, yeah, since then been all over South Africa, Mexico, Falklands, America, Finland, to name a few. Um, but yeah, loads of uh, opportunity for travel. And as I said earlier, there's loads of opportunity to travel, uh, not just um, with the band, but sometimes on your own or with a small ensemble um, or with the with the core drums. Um, and, you know, I've done all of those. It's been great. You know, I went away to do the Norway International Tattoo a few years ago with the band. Um, and then I went away to... Um, South Africa with the core drums and um, a small ensemble, uh, which was ace. Really, really good. And then there have been opportunities in the past. Hopefully there'll be more in the future for um, buglers to provide uh, a bugler on board ship. Um, but that hasn't happened for a while. But hopefully it might come back. Uh, right. Nicola King 16. Have I ever played at a wedding? Yes. I've played at my best friend's wedding. Uh, we've done... Uh, yeah, drum displays at weddings and things like that. Um, it was great. Um, how do I cope on cold days, e.g. last post in November, from GBR6400T? Uh, that's a great question. Um, everyone has their own technique on that one. Um, I try and keep my lips moving as much as I can. Um, sometimes bite them lightly or whatever. It sounds crazy, but just try and keep the, um, keep, you know, the blood flowing and things like that. Uh, but it is quite a difficult one, especially if you're stood there for a long period of time um, with a cold wind facing you. Uh, it can be quite hard to blow a uh, a bugle straight after that. So it is, again, working out what works best for you. But yeah, personally, I just try and keep my lips moving as much as I can. Uh... Callum underscore oh eight. Didn't my dad, Phil Hawkins, teach you? Yes, he did. Core Bugle Major, Phil Hawkins, did teach me for a couple of years before I joined up. Um, Lewis Crow, who's my favourite bugler? Good question. I won't answer that one. Uh, what age did I join? I joined at 17. Uh, you can join from 16, I think. Um, and... Yeah, I did one year of A-levels. Um, I wanted to join up originally at 16, but uh, at the time it wasn't right for me. Uh, so I joined up at 17 and, yeah, never looked back. Been ace. Uh, do the RMBS have sports teams? Yes, they do. Uh, there's loads of opportunity for sports within the band service, within the Corps and the Navy. Um, there's loads of people that play for, uh, as I said, there's band service, football teams, rugby teams, golf teams, um, all sorts. And then wider, um, you can end up playing for, um, you know, the Navy rugby team, for example. Uh, Corporal Ed Pasco plays for the uh, Royal Navy rugby team, along with a, lot, um, a few others. Uh, he's the first person that came to mind. But yeah, there's loads of sports opportunities and you can travel the world doing that sport as well. Uh, so that's a great question. Um, can you choose what band you're in, e.g. Portsmouth? Um, yes, t well, sort of. You can put in your preferences. So uh, you have three preferences, first, second and third, and then a ne negative preference. And what um, uh, our guys will do is try and work out what is best, um, what the best situation we can they can put you in. So if they can, they'll put you in your first preference. Sometimes it doesn't work out quite like that, um, but... Being that we've got the five bands in the country, um, two in Pompey area, you know, one in Portsmouth, one in Fareham, HMS Collingwood, uh, one down in uh, Devon, in Limston uh, and Plymouth, and then one up in Scotland as well. Um, there's quite a lot of people that want to be in Portsmouth area. And once you get promoted to corporal or above, uh, there's lots of opportunity for you to go and be an instructor at the School of Music, for example. Um, 
and you know lots of other opportunities as well so yeah it's it's that you do sort of get a um a preference it's not so much a choice but a preference and if if they can keep you where you want to be they will do which is great um is the recruitment officer doing a live stream yes uh bangkok lamy phillips will be on straight after me um after this answering any recruitment questions that you've got um so any recruitment questions that i haven't answered or can't answer uh, in full do ask um amy those questions um as well and she will be able to um give you a lot more information on that uh do you have any tips for young children getting into music my four-year-old loves the roaring's band uh from brownie eyed girl yeah i mean look around see uh what local bands you've got around near you what local teachers anything like that um and look at videos on youtube that's what all i used to do i used to just um scroll over youtube and and look at loads of videos of the band service a lot um and you know just to just to uh, fuel interest um but yeah as and when um as and when you can do look at potential uh, bands where there might be people that could teach um or potentially see what instruments they'd like to play um what would you say your best experience being in the R&B or best opportunity uh from Daisy Doodle um best experience as i said earlier was top secret i think uh playing with top secret on MFM 17 um but best opportunity um that's quite a difficult one to answer uh, because there are loads there are loads of opportunities if you choose to take them with sport um uh, musical opportunities as well travel opportunities um so there's loads it's really hard to pick one um not a bad question though do you have any tips for playing at a funeral um <clears throat> yeah um it's quite a difficult one um if it's you know i'm assuming it might be your first one um but it, again it's it's just trying to work out the best way that you work with nerves and things like that and so sometimes maybe if you if you practice putting yourself under pressure and uh, maybe video yourself um playing a last post um j- because that to a lot of people myself included if you video yourself all of a sudden you put yourself under pressure um so that's not a bad one um try and picture yourself at the funeral and things like that anything that you can try and do to maybe eliminate um possible nerves on the day um but good preparation you know or just loads of practice beforehand um yeah lots of different tips um Joe Stevens, Joe and Andy Birchfield here. Hello. Um remember me? Yeah, I remember those as well. Remember those mass bands gigs? Yeah, great. Uh Right, Samuel Norton Griffiths. Um and I'm sure you will mention trying things out at Sea Cadets which can lead to the National Sea Cadet Marching Band. Absolutely. Um I actually was never a Sea Cadet myself. Um but they are great organisations. Um, if you can join one, if you're a budding Roaring Bugler especially, um, do um, do see what you can do in getting, getting in amongst uh, cadets and cadet bands. And then um, down the line, you can join, uh, join the National Sea Cadet Band. And another thing as well is that actually there's quite a lot of uh, Royal Marines buglers that help out um, and musicians that help out um, in local cadet units and things like that as well. Um, so if there's any cadet units out there as well that that may want some help do give us a do give us a shout we may be able to help you um sticks dave 77 nev dave Novak, what's your most memorable trip as a bugler uh that's a difficult one probably when i went to uh, djibouti on my own uh on the east of africa for a day uh, that was pretty memorable. Um, I went out to play a solo last post. Uh, no, solo sunset. Wrong. On um, the back of a ship, uh, which was pretty amazing. 
Um, very weird experience. Uh, but I've also had some great trips uh, when we went to Mexico. That was pretty amazing. In South Africa and Mexico, that, they were um, gigs for the embassies out there. So we went out, did a couple of things for the embassy, and then played for local schools as well. So we went out for Mexico. We went out and played um, to... Um, some local schools that had uh, English students in them from Remembrance uh, to try and promote uh, the poppy pill and things like that, which was great. Um, uh, right. I think that membership of the Cadet Corps looks good on your CV to when applying to the RMBS. Definitely, yeah, anything that you can prove that you've had experience or got experience, uh, f you know, for doing, uh, you know, building your experience for the job um, is great. Um, is there a Navy basketball team? I'm sure there is. Um, or Marines band basketball team? I'm not sure about a Marines band basketball team. Could be wrong, but the, I'm almost certain there is a Navy basketball team. Uh, from Elaine, are you managing to keep your skill set up whilst in lockdown? I'm trying my best. Yeah, keeping my hands going and keeping my lips going. Again, just keep playing um, as much as you can. Um, I've been trying. Uh, da, 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 what else have we got? Is there a National RM March from Corey Kohut? Uh, yeah, that would be... Um, or the, the Regimental March of the Royal Marines is a life on the ocean wave. And what we play at all of our engagements, um, concerts and big retreats, etc. Uh, right. Okay, this is good. Um, right. Okay. I'm not sure if I've got that many other questions. Hi, Tim Button, 2019. Hello. Tim was on the trip that we went to South Africa. Amazing. Again, uh, embassy gig. Again, uh, we went to um, lots of little schools around about as well, which was incredible. And we also did a shark dive whilst we were there. Went diving um, in a cage on the side of a boat. So another great opportunity that we had whilst we were out there. Um, Right. Okay. Sorry, just having a quick look. Um, is there much travel? Yeah, loads, as I've mentioned. Great. Um, are you doing a recording of this as I miss the start? Um, yes, this will be live, or this will be available to get again um, on Instagram for the next 24 hours once it's finished. And it could potentially be put on YouTube I think as well. Um, so you should be able to watch it again, hopefully. Um, I'm not sure it'd be, if it'll be available when uh, Corporal Phillips is doing her bit straight after this, um, but when she's finished, it definitely will then. Um, ideal. Right. Okay, great. I think we're starting to... How do you keep a straight face with the RMBS comments? <laughs> Good question. Um, any country you still would like to travel to within the band? Uh, yeah, I'd like to go to Australia. Definitely. Australia and New Zealand. There's loads of places. That's part of the reason I joined up actually is travel. Um, uh, I love traveling, especially to places where I maybe wouldn't go on holiday, but, you know, different places all the same. It's great. Uh, what makes RM better than the British Army music or the RAF music? That's that's a very difficult question. We're all different. We're all different. But the Royal Marines are the only ones that have got a core of drums. Um, so that's certainly different. Uh, right. Is there any class on YouTube? Yes. Um, so uh, Sergeant Bugler Harris, Chris Harris... Um, put together a set of videos on YouTube of um, how to how to play as a Royal Marines bugler, um, how to learn drumming, etc. If you have a look on, I think it's the Royal Marines YouTube page, uh, do have a look on there because there's some great videos on there to, to learn from, especially if you're just starting out as well. Um, but also there are some great videos on there for 
uh, people that are a, a bit more advanced as well. Great. Um, have I ever been to Japan with the Royal Marines? Sadly not yet, no. Another place I'd like to go. Um, great masterclasses, thank you. Good, 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 good. Um, how did I get into bugling? Uh, to be honest, um, I wanted to learn bugle because I knew I wanted to do this job. Um, so uh, I did, I learned through um, now the core bugle major, uh, Phil Hawkins, he taught me. Um, but I'm sure anyone around about, if, if you can't find anyone specifically to teach you bugle, um, do ha ask about for cornet teachers uh, because they would no doubt help you at least with the foundations. Uh, right. How much downtime do we get? Um, it varies a lot. We get very busy and not so busy at different at different times. We are quite a busy band service. Um, obviously not quite at the minute with with lockdown, but um, no, we, we it does differ. But we we definitely do get um, a decent amount of downtime. We get decent leave periods. We get two weeks Easter, three weeks summer, uh, and two weeks Christmas leave. Um, so which, which is great. You know, really really great amount of time off. Um, breaks in between. Uh, gigging around the country around the world okay great right I should probably start wrapping this up so um, do stay on after this for uh, Bangkok Will Amy Phillips uh, who is our recruitment officer um, who will answer any questions uh, you may have recruitment wise any ones that I um, either haven't answered in full or couldn't answer um, through this she'll be able to answer anything like that um, especially about the audition process so do stay on here now um, to ask those questions. Um, do follow the Warmerings Band Service on Instagram. I'm assuming you probably already do because you're watching this, but do follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. Um, do have a look on YouTube at our, um, our MFM concert specifically. We've got MFM 2017, I think, onwards. Um, the full, full concert uh, recorded really, really well. Um, uh, MFM 2020 was live broadcast a few weeks ago, now on there. Um, so if you're looking for something to watch, it's a great watch. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I have also got this, a recruitment banner. Uh, so do take down that information if you want to. Um, hashtag RMBS Masterclass. Uh, if you play anything and want us to see it, we can't promise anything, but if you hashtag that... Um, no doubt there'll be a few of us um, that will see that and could potentially um, give comments on that. Um, right, I think that's it for me now. So thank you very much um, for joining me. It's a massive privilege to have uh, such a huge amount of people. Um, it's very strange though, knowing that I'm talking to my phone, but no, thank you very, very much for joining me. Uh, do stay on uh, for Van Corporal Amy Phillips for her, um, for her recruitment bits and bobs um but i think that'd be it for me so thank you very much again um and if i don't see you um at a concert or anything like that i may well see you in the royal rings band service in the future thank you very much cheers all